Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Sometimes Karen just overreacts to the staff. It's a shame she doesn't always get a decent response. But before we begin, best way to support our channel is to leave comments, like, and subscribe with the turned on bell so you don't miss the new video every single day. Customer demands cashier to tow and fill up her car and pay for it. Okay, this is going back to 2003. I'm working a minimum wage job at a very busy gas station in the UK. I'd only been there a few months. That's outstanding considering the staff turnover for this place. I know the ropes of the place and it's also, and still is, very busy. Lines of cars and trucks going down the highway and a line of customers going out the door and I'm working alone as usual. Hundreds of customers with places to be. Cast. Me, the overworked 17-year-old with a bright future of PTSD of other mental health goodness. Next 15 years of bliss in this hellhole. Karen, well, you know. Customers, everyone else. Karen got out of a taxi, came up to the front of the line, past 20 customers waiting patiently. Age 70 plus, she's dressed head to toe in a black velvet and fur coat, wearing more jewelry than I've ever seen. She also looked vaguely familiar. See at the end. She demands in a very snobby voice, I need fuel. Me. I'm sorry, but you'll have to wait your turn. Karen. I need fuel and my car collected from down the road. Me and a few customers give her a weird look. If you've broken down, I have the number for a recovery service and you can use our phone and hand her a card with the number and the phone in between customers. She just looked at the card and phone as if I put dead rats on the counter. Why can't you do it? Me. I'm afraid to say I can. It's very busy today. Karen. No. Why can't you go retrieve my car? Me. Wondering. WTF. We're a petrol station. We don't offer recovery services. Karen. Nonsense. You will collect my car this instant. I'm getting annoyed by now. So are the other customers. She lets her car run out of fuel, leaves it on a gridlocked highway, gets a taxi to my station, and somehow it's my fault and responsibility to rectify the situation? How? I can't close the station. I'm here on my own. I don't own a car or even have a license. I'll call the recovery company for you when I have a free moment. Just be aware they will charge a fee and need payment in cash. There's an ATM outside. Now she gets red in the face. Are you stupid? Why should I pay? My car's run out of fuel. You have to deal with it. I'm trying to keep cool, serve customers, and finding an alternative to get her out the store at this point. In that case, there are fuel cans behind you that you can purchase and fill. Karen. Very well. She picks up a one-gallon can and slams it on the counter. Go fill it. I quickly say sorry to next customer and scan the can. That'll be five pounds and another 350 to fill it and 850 altogether. Karen. I'm not paying for that. It's your responsibility to provide fuel, and your customer service is atrocious. I refuse to pay, and you will pay for my recovery, my fuel, and my taxi. Me. Then you can leave. An entire line of customers are chewing her out, too, telling her to get the F out. We're busy and stupid of old cow. Karen, you will be hearing from me about this, and I will have your job for this insolence. And she storms out and gets back into the taxi that was blocking my forecourt. We did hear back from her about a week later. She had gone to customer complaints, reached the regional manager and the national HR, claiming that I was responsible for her car running out of fuel, it being abandoned on a highway, refusing to pay for towing and refueling, and being humiliated in front of other customers with demands of reimbursement and compensation for poor quality of service. Finally, a letter of apology written and signed by me with my letter of resignation. A week after this, the manager pulls me aside. She knew all about it. She heard the story from me and a few of our regular customers as well as watched and heard it all on our security cameras. The Karen sounded crazy and looked like she had just come from a funeral. She chalked it up as being emotionally drained, senility, mental health, and said not to worry about it. She'd seen worse. Then she got the letters and phone calls from head office and threw her theory out the window. She handed me a copy of the letter that was sent to Karen stating that she was barred from all of our company stations nationwide and informed that the company or all members of staff are not charities. 
I read the name and realized she was my old principal from primary school. She was an old hellhound when I was five and looks like she just got worse as she got older. And our second story. Landscaping begging. Me and my wife bought our first house last year. The house is a little bit on the shabby side and needs a lot of work done to it, which we've slowly been working through as and when we have the money. The garden is crazy overgrown, however, and I've been slowly working away at it when I can, however, is it doing my back end? There are many trees and tree stumps that need removed all over the garden. The garden's roughly 22 by 11 meters. The main plan for the garden is to clear it all out so we can build a rather large aviary. Me and my wife take in unwanted and mistreated parrots with the intention of rehoming them while also offering support to anyone who may need it. We currently have 30 to 40 parrots, buggies, cockatiels, lovebirds, kakarikis, etc., which are currently in my modified garage waiting for it to be built. The main thing we need in place before we can start the aviary is a six-foot fence around the entire garden. This is needed mainly to act as a windbreak as the area we live in can get rather windy. It's also necessary to stop being walking into my garden as we're backed into the woods. I made sure to tell my neighbors what was going on months in advance as having good neighbors who you can speak and have a laugh with is really important to me. Both of my neighbors were really happy with this as my garden was actually lowering the property value of theirs. People don't want to live next to someone who won't look after their garden, etc., if you know what I mean. Great, I hired a company to start the work straight away. This is where it started going downhill, and the choosing beggary begins. So we have neighbor one and two. Neighbor one is great with no problems, and neighbor two is ultimate CB, N1 and N2 for short. Work started in the garden, and things were all going pretty smooth. N1 and N2 came out to meet the landscapers to discuss what the fence would look like, which they had no objections to. The fence would be a standard six-foot picket fence that would not be painted as I can save money by doing that myself. Not a problem. Or so I thought. While I was at work, I got a few text messages from the landscaper saying that I needed to speak with N2 as she was pestering them constantly about things that needed to be done. I got home and went straight over to see what the issue was. N2 was saying to the landscapers that I had asked her to say I wanted apple trees planted between me and N2's property. I did not agree to this in the first place, but I wanted to keep the peace and stay on good terms with my neighbors, so I had the landscapers add in the trees as it wasn't going to cost too much more anyways. Everything carried on for a few more days when I got another text from the landscaper saying she's demanding more stuff. I walked over to N2's house after work to speak and see what she wanted. She'd been demanding that the landscapers add a patio to her garden next to the fence. The conversation went a little bit like this. Me, if you want a patio, you'll have to pay the landscapers once they've done the work on my garden. Her, but they can do it now. It'll look really nice. Me, I'm sure it'll look nice, but right now I'm paying them for work on my garden. You can hire them afterwards. Her, why would I do that? They're just going to do all that work to your garden. Surely it wouldn't cost to do this little bit for me. Me, patios can be very expensive depending on what you want. Her, that's all pennies to you. Me, it's not me paying for it though. Her, why not? Me, it's not my garden. Her, but the amount of money you've spent, surely this won't matter. Me, that's not how this works. If you want your garden done, you will be paying for it. Her, but that's not fair. Me, that's not my problem. I left pretty pissed off and spoke with my wife and N1 about the situation. Ended up planting the apple trees N2 was demanding in N1's garden as they're extremely nice and have never had an issue with anything I do. They even take my bins out if I forget them. They are over the moon. Dead happy with their new apple trees. N2 tried to argue with me about the apple trees a couple of days later, but I just kept doing my own thing and kept repeating, if you want some trees so much, go buy some. The work in my garden is still ongoing, and N2 likes to sit in her conservatory and stare at the landscapers all day. She won't speak to me anymore, but to be honest, I don't really care. I never understood putting something on someone's tab or bill without their green light for it. And our last story. Karen tried to kidnap me because I don't look like my mom. 
So, backstory is my mom is Filipino, raised in California, doesn't have an accent or anything, and my dad is a white dude. I look like my dad, pale, and don't look Asian at all. This happens when I was an infant and my mom told me about the story because me and my husband are going to have kids soon and she wanted to tell me her racist experience. My family were at the mall, me and the stroller obviously, in comes the Karen. My dad went to the restroom real quick and my mom decided to sit down and wait for him. Karen, oh how cute she is. How old is she? Mom, she's five months old. The Karen looked at my mom and confused. Karen, oh are you the nanny? Mom, nope, I'm the... Karen, you must be the babysitter. Mom, who's in shock. Mom, no, I'm the mom, I gave birth to her. Karen, but she doesn't look like you at all. Mom, well, no, but she does look like her father. Karen, nonsense. This child doesn't look like you, and I don't see a father around. You probably kidnapped this poor child. Mom is in total shock and scared. Then this bee tried to take me out of the stroller. Mom, what the hell are you doing? That's my baby. Karen, I'm going to find this child's real parents. Dad comes back out and sees what's going on and ran to my mom's side. Dad, what the F is going on? Where's my child? Turns out Karen kidnapped me and was standing outside the store. When dad came out of the store, Karen saw he looked like me and finally backed off. As she walked away, yes, my parents reported her for attempted kidnapping, but we never know what happened to her. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.